the next one is y proportional to x here there is a direct relation between y and x that means if x is doubled y will also be doubled if x becomes 3 times y will also become 3 times if x is halved y will also be halved and so on so let's see how do we get the graph for y proportional to x so this is our y axis this is our x axis this is our origin suppose initially when x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 that means we will start from here this may not be always the case but we assume this when x is 1 y becomes 2 then when x gets doubled when x is 1 y is 2 when x gets doubled to 2 because there is a direct relation between y and x if x is doubled y should also be doubled so when x is 2 y should be 4 when x will become 4 y will become 8 when x will become 3 y will become 6 so you can plot those points you will find by joining those points you should get a, a straight line if these two parameters this is y this is x the one along y axis and the one along x axis if these two parameters are directly proportional to each other then what kind of graph we should get students we should get a, a straight line and you know its slope how do you find uh, we make a triangle like this and its slope gives you delta y by delta x this is our delta y this is our delta x you can see the previous lessons how we have discussed about the concept of slope in this case we can have other possibilities also for example you can also have a graph like so here there is a negative slope negative slope means with increase in x here in case of positive slope with increase in x y was increasing but it was increasing linearly linearly means there is a proportional relation here we will write y is proportional to x no doubt but with a negative sign what does that minus sign mean it means when x increases y will decrease but it will decrease linearly that's why the graph will be a straight line so you should remember about this also students next one y proportional to x square this uh, math in mathematics we have not drawn such curves but then in physics you will need them just remember some of the equations of motion which uh, we will discuss in this particular chapter will have such sort of variation one of the variable has power 1 and the other variable has power 2 if y is proportional to square of x then the graph is somewhat like this or it can be like this this is a curve which we call as parabola now as i told you have not read about such uh, curves in your mathematics classes but for the time being just to remember if y is proportional to x square graph will not be straight line it will be a curve and that curve will be called as what that curve will be called as parabola it is uh, opening upward and downward in these two cases so these are the three cases which i would like to discuss there might be some more cases we will discuss them afterwards with these three cases in your mind you can easily plot position time graph uh, velocity time graph for different cases which we shall discuss shortly the first type of graphs that we would like to discuss are the position time graphs three different cases i will discuss the first one is the simplest one particle is at rest suppose this is your one dimensional path this is origin this is our x axis these are plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 values these are minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 values and so on suppose there is a particle which is resting on this line at some position say here 
since it is at rest it will not show any kind of motion whatever be the value of time after 1 second after 2 second after 3 second since it is at rest it will always be at which position students at x is equal to 1 so how do we plot the graph that means in this case i can say the value of x for this particle is always 1 it is not changing that means x is equal to constant now see what we have discussed just now the first case under graph section that we discussed was that if this parameter is constant then what is the nature of graph if you do not remember please go back to that particular instant when i have discussed those things you will find the answer if you have recalled it should be a straight line parallel to time axis so we should draw the graph like this now where should we draw this graph that will depend upon the position here the position was x is equal to 1 so here i should write x is equal to 1 if it is at some other position the graph will start from that particular point so in general we will have a graph like this a straight line parallel to time axis is it clear okay next one is uniform motion if you remember we have discussed uniform motion uniform motion is that motion along a straight path where the direction of velocity and the magnitude of velocity remains same that means i can say velocity is constant such a motion is called as uniform motion now if you remember students velocity is nothing but displacement by time displacement by time is nothing but velocity if delta x by t is constant see i am telling the trick to remember the graphs otherwise if you simply memorize the graphs there is no point if delta x by t is constant when do we write y by x is constant y by x is constant that means y is directly proportional to x you should remember this when two things are directly proportional to each other then their ratio is a constant here you see the ratio of delta x and t is a constant that means i can write delta x is directly proportional to time or delta t time interval will be delta t since there is a direct relation between them like this therefore their ratio is a constant now while discussing graphs i have told that if y is proportional to x then the graph between them is a straight line same thing you have to use over here here delta x is proportional to delta t therefore between x and t the graph should be like this if at t is equal to 0 the particle was at origin then the graph will start from origin but if initially when we started observing the particle suppose it was at x is equal to 1 then we will start the graph from x is equal to 1 but the nature of graph will always be a straight line like this so always remember students for uniform motion position time graph or xt graph will be a straight line uh, it may be inclined upwards it may be inclined downwards but always it will be a straight line what is the difference between these two in this case we find as time increases the value of x also increases you can see uh, as time increases on t axis the value of x is also increasing opposite is the case over here here as time increases you can see as time increases the value of x decreases so this is the uh, these are two different situations but in both cases what is common students the common thing is that in both of them the graph is a straight line let us see now uniform acceleration one thing i would like to add here i uh, will read it afterwards we have not yet discussed for uniform acceleration the position of a particle or displacement of a particle x has some relation in which you will find a square of t there is an equation of motion s is equal to ut plus half a t square which we have not yet discussed for the time being bear with me just uh, recall just uh, 
uh, assume that this relation holds true for uniformly accelerated motion. Now, uniform acceleration means acceleration is uniform that is A is equal to constant. That means velocity will increase linearly with time. In this case, I have told you earlier students if y is proportional to x square then what is the nature of the graph? The graph is not a straight line, it is a curve, it will be parabolic. So the graph will be something like this. Or it can also open upward like this. Both of them are correct. Now in one of them acceleration is positive and in other one of them acceleration is negative. Now what does positive and negative mean? That depends upon our sign convention. For example, in this uh, figure, if we choose direction towards right as positive, then direction towards left will be taken as negative. Acceleration is always in the direction of force. Now, if a particle is moving, it will have some direction of velocity, it will have some direction of acceleration, and according to the direction of those quantities, we will assign plus or minus values. You have to decide out of these two which one of them has positive acceleration, which one of them has negative acceleration. I will come back to this particular question after I have a sufficient discussion on this particular topic, but that is an important thing. Please try to understand the graph and try to conclude on your own which one of them is having a positive value of acceleration. So this is all about position time graph. Let us now switch over to velocity time graph. In the same situation, let us try to plot the velocity time graphs. The first one particle at rest. Particle at rest, we have discussed it is at rest at say x is equal to 1. But since it is at rest, it will not move. And if it does not move, we have to plot the velocity against time. What would be its velocity at any instant? It will always be 0. Is it a constant? Yes, it is a constant. Uh, because always it remains 0. It is a special constant that is 0. If it is constant, we know the graph must be straight line parallel to the time axis. Now, where does it start from? It starts from 0. So from 0, we will draw a line that is parallel to time axis. So, what kind of graph will get? We will get a straight line along time axis. So, this will be the VT graph for a particle at rest. Next, we have uniform motion. Uniform motion we have already discussed. Again, V is constant, but since there is motion, velocity has some non-zero value. So it will not start from origin. It should be like so. Note that if velocity is towards right, then V should be taken as positive. Then the graph will be like this. What would happen if there is some particle which is moving in opposite direction? Then we should take velocity as negative. And in that case, what should be the nature of the graph? This is our time axis. This is our velocity axis. Velocity will be negative. Negative means you will draw it below the time axis. Understand the difference between these two graphs. Here I am writing this is for v greater than 0 and this one is for v less than 0. What does uh, greater and less than 0 mean? Greater and less than 0 does not mean that V is plus 5 and minus 5. Here it is not relating the magnitude. Greater and less simply indicates that here the velocity is in the positive direction as per the convention chosen by you. And here velocity is in the negative direction. Now what does positive and negative direction mean? It can mean right and left. In some cases it can mean top and down and so on. So the convention has to be decided by the user. And then third one. Third one is uniformly accelerated motion, that is uniform acceleration. Now, if acceleration is uniform, students, then as we have discussed, A is equal to constant. Using this analogy, how do we define acceleration? Acceleration is defined as change in velocity divided by time interval. This is our acceleration and this is constant for uniform acceleration. If that is constant, then I have already discussed, if y by x is constant, then y must be proportional to x. So the change in velocity must be proportional to time interval. 
if it is so then between v and t if there is a direct relation then what kind of graph we should get we should get a straight line it may or may not pass through origin if at t is equal to 0 velocity will be 0 that means the particle starts from rest then the graph should start from origin but f if at t is equal to 0 when you start observing the situation you find that the particle was already in motion it had some velocity then you will draw the graph from here if acceleration is positive this will be the graph if acceleration is negative the graph will be pointing downward i am drawing it by dashed line this is for a less than 0 how did we know that see acceleration if you remember uh, we have discussed slope of a velocity time graph gives acceleration if we produce this line it makes acute angle remember whenever the angle made by the graph with time axis or x axis is acute acute means less than 90 degree it has a positive slope and if it makes obtuse angle obtuse angle means greater than 90 degree you can see this angle is greater than 90 degree angle beta if the angle made with positive direction of time axis is obtuse then the slope is negative these concepts of positive negative slopes i will uh, take a separate uh, lesson on that particular thing so please don't bother about them much but for the time being please do remember these uh, essential graphs uh, one we have discussed was position time graph other one was uh, other one is velocity time graph uh, like this you can also switch over to acceleration time graphs let's see one by one okay again we'll discuss now at graphs acceleration versus time graphs for the same three situations if the particle is at rest we have discussed velocity will be zero and velocity is not changing therefore acceleration will also be zero see please never conclude that if velocity is zero acceleration is zero what i am saying velocity is not changing that's why acceleration is zero uh, let me give you one task can you think of a situation where at particular instant where velocity is zero but acceleration is not zero this is a question be very careful while uh, uh, speaking something regarding the zeroness of velocity and acceleration so i repeat my question you try to think of a situation wherein an object has zero velocity but it has a non-zero acceleration okay so here acceleration is zero not because velocity is zero but because velocity is always zero it is not changing so if acceleration is zero we know the graph will be along the time axis next one is uniform motion uniform motion velocity is constant if a velocity is constant that means velocity is not changing what will be our acceleration acceleration how do we define change in velocity by time interval but since velocity is not changing therefore this acceleration must again be how much zero if acceleration is zero the graph must be parallel to time axis starting from zero so this will be the graph for at uh, for uniform motion uniform acceleration acceleration is constant acceleration is constant means if it is positive we will draw it above the time axis uh, i should write here a greater than zero and if acceleration is negative it is directed towards left as per our convention then we should draw it uh, in the negative direction this is a less than zero this is our origin so these are the different cases uh, which you should remember please don't try to memorize them memorizing is not the solution the way i have discussed that we try to understand so that whenever some question comes you can easily plot the graph we would now like to discuss one question pertaining to what we have discussed so far this is a velocity time graph before discussing this question let's try to understand what kind of graph is this so it is of course in one dimensional path along a straight line path
this is our x-axis, this is origin and so on. There is a particle whose velocity at t is equal to 0 was 0. That means it starts from rest and you see this vt graph is a straight line from here to here. Let me call it as this point as a, this point as b, this point as c. Now O to A is a straight line. That means what kind of motion is this? From the things which we have discussed, we can conclude this is uniform motion. Velocity is increasing linearly with time. Then A to B, what kind of motion is this? Here you see velocity is always at 2 meter per second. This velocity is fixed at 2 meter per second. So velocity is not changing. So that means uh, this is uniform motion. I think, I don't remember, uh, 0 to A, I called it probably uniform motion. Uh, if I have told that, that is not correct. Velocity is increasing uniformly with time. That means it is uniformly accelerated motion from O to A. A to B, velocity is constant. So it is uniform motion. And B to C, again, we find velocity is decreasing. It decreases to 0, but linearly. So it is again uniformly accelerated motion. But here, direction of acceleration is negative here direction of acceleration is positive please see the slope of vt graph you will understand okay let's see the questions one by one a what is the acceleration this a is acceleration in three these three intervals 0 to 2 second 2 to 4 second and 4 second to 6 second let's see one by one 0 to 2 second we will first find acceleration how do you find acceleration from vt graph Acceleration can be found from Vt graph by finding slope. So acceleration is equal to slope. Slope, how do you find? Now this is a straight line. Take two points. Those two points can be here, can be there. But we know these coordinates. That's why I'll choose the points O and A. Is this right angle triangle? Yes. How do you find slope? Uh, let me call this point as D. This will be AD by OD. Now, how much is AD students? AD is nothing but 2. When you write 2, write with unit. This 2 is for velocity whose units we have written meter per second by OD. How much is OD? How much, uh, OD is 2 seconds. So, 2, 2 will cancel. How much will be left? 1 meters per second square. So, this is the value for acceleration in the first interval. Next, from 2 seconds to 4 seconds, you can see, I have already discussed, and this is plus, acceleration is positive. From A to B, the change in velocity is how much students? 0. Why 0? Because velocity is not changing. If change in velocity is 0, that means acceleration will also be 0. You can also understand from this particular concept, it is the slope of line AB. Now, line AB is like this. It makes 0 angle with time axis. Do you think this line, horizontal line, has any slope? Answer is no. That's why the acceleration will be 0. Then in last interval, 4 seconds to 6 seconds, acceleration is again slope. But this time, this slope is negative. So we should write minus. Uh, this point I will write as E. B E upon E C. You can see this line was making acute angle, which I have told in the last section for as AT graph. And this curve, this line BC is making obtuse angle. This angle is greater than 90 degree. That is also a hint. That's why that slope will be negative and this slope was positive is equal to minus. How much is BE? BE is this much. That is 2 meters per second. And how much is EC? E to C is this one. That is 6 minus 4 seconds so this on calculating calcul calculation will give you one meters per second square with a negative sign so this way we have got the values of acceleration now let's try to solve b part b what they are asking they are asking in this entire motion which has been represented from o to c what is the total displacement in six seconds from here to here what is the displacement now, what is this graph? This is velocity time graph. And we have discussed, students, from velocity time graph, if you find slope, we are getting acceleration. And if you find area under the graph, you will get displacement. So, I should write here, displacement is nothing but area 
अंदर वी टी ग्राफ वी टी ग्राफ नाउ दिस वी टी ग्राफ इज लाइक सो द एरिया अंदर दिस वी टी ग्राफ विल बी इक्वल टू दिस एरिया विच आई एम सेडिंग नाउ वट इज दिस सेप दिस सेप इज दैट ऑफ ए ट्रेपेजियम सो दिस इज इक्वल टू एरिया ऑफ ट्रेपेजियम विच ट्रेपेजियम ओ ए बी सी हाउ डू यू फाइंड एरिया ऑफ ट्रेपेजियम हाफ इंटू सम ऑफ पैरल साइड्स इंटू डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दैम इन दिस ट्रेपेजियम विच आर दी पैरल साइड्स ए बी एंड ओ सी एंड वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दैम डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दैम इज दिस ए टू डी लेट्स पुट द वैल्यूज हाफ हाउ मच इज ए बी यू कैन सी ए बी इज दिस मच फोर माइनस टू आई एम राइटिंग इट टू प्लस हाउ मच इज ओ सी ओ टू सी इज सिक्स एंड दीज आर सेकेंड्स टू सेकेंड प्लस सिक्स सेकेंड्स इन टू ए डी हाउ मच इज ए डी ए डी इज टू मीटर्स पर सेकेंड सो टू टू विल कैंसिल सिक्स प्लस टू एट एट एंड देन सेकेंड एंड सेकेंड विल ऑल्सो कैंसिल विल गेट एट मीटर्स वी कैन ऑल्सो ब्रेक इट अप एंड डू इट इन अदर फैशन इंस्टेड ऑफ डायरेक्टली राइटिंग एरिया ऑफ ट्रेपेजियम वॉट यू कैन डू दिस एरिया यू कैन डिवाइड इन टू थ्री पार्ट्स दिस इज वन पार्ट विच इज ट्राइंगुलर दिस इज अदर पार्ट विच इज ऑल्सो ए ट्राइंगल ट्राइंगल एरिया यू नो हाफ इन टू बेस इन टू हाइट एंड दिस मिडिल पार्ट दैट इज अ रेक्टेंगल प्लीज ट्राई टू इट डू इट विथ दैट मेथड by finding area of this triangle area of this rectangle area of this triangle and then add them up you should get the answer as 8 meters so students i think i'll stop here uh, next class we'll switch over to some more problems like this related to graphs before i uh, oh one thing i forgot uh, in one of the previous lessons one amongst you one of the students i'm uh, thankful to him he pointed out some mistake I don't remember the exact question, but there was some question that a particle moves in a semi-circular track, and the radius of that track was given. Uh, I think 14 meet 14 meters or centimeters. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Uh, but then the mistake was that uh, the displacement which I have written on the board, the displacement which is twice of radius, the radius was given 14 meters. so twice of r should be 2 into 14 meters which is 28 meters but unfortunately uh, i committed a mistake and i have written it as 14 meters so it should be rectified uh, please see that particular lesson uh, don't get confused and i am i i have a firm belief that most of you must have pointed out it, uh, that mistake uh, but i am thankful especially to one particular person who mailed me that Uh, this particular uh, treatment is wrong not treatment the answer is wrong and he is correct uh, so likewise uh, you also be cautious there can be points where i might commit mistakes soon but the main thing is you have to understand the process so i take this opportunity to thank uh, all of you uh, see you in the next class may god bless you